Here I've got the Rigid 4333 13 inch planer. It's 120 volt and it needs some maintenance. My boards aren't feeding as well as they should and I feel like my rollers are dirty and my blades are dull. So I got a new pack of blades. They're double sided. You can pick them up at Home Depot for around 30 bucks. So I've already squirted the jack screws with WD-40 so it goes up and down nice and smooth. Cleaned all the sawdust out of it. Well, most of it anyway. So I'm going to show you all how to clean the rollers and change the blades. And we'll go ahead and wax the platen and uh, be back in business. So as you can see, these rollers are pretty dirty. Now, I like to clean the rollers before I change the blades, just because I have nicked my finger on the blades while cleaning them, and the new blades are extremely sharp. So what I'll do, I'll take some mineral spirits, and, uh, Put it on a terry cloth. You can buy these terry cloths at your local big box store. Now when doing this, you want to make sure you get the whole roller nice and clean. You still want to be careful of the dull blades, even though they're dull, catching them at the right angle and still peel these gloves right open. So you do both blades, see how dirty? Now, once you get the rollers as far as you can, you wanna bump your planer just enough to bring the dirty spot around. There you go. Sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, make sure you unplug your planer when you're sticking your hands in it. So, uh, Keep your hands out of it, bump your planer just a little bit to bring those rollers back around. And then unplug your planer again and start cleaning all over. So now that the rollers are nice and clean, go ahead and clean your bed off. I use the same mineral spirits to clean the bed as I do the rollers. We're just cleaning it. We'll wax it here in a few minutes. I use regular turtle wax. You could use, some people use paste wax. Some people use mothers. I always have turtle wax. I like turtle wax, so. Might be a little old school, but you know, it gets the job done. So again, before you stick your hands in the planer, unplug it. Now, this planer, the 4331, comes with this little safety tab. You can pull it out, and it's not supposed to turn on. But, I feel like it's just better to unplug it and be safe. Now the 4331 comes with an Allen key right here on the side. Now this is about four years old so I like to use a fresh one because that one's a little worn out. You got to take this screw out to uncover the blades. Now a little tip while I'm unscrewing these is changing your blades is something you want to do while your planer is cold. You don't want to run a bunch of material through it and realize that your blades are sharp 
and then try to uh, decide you're going to change your blades. Because there's this little thing called thermal expansion. And when that happens, your screws swell up and they snap off. So it's definitely something you want to do when it's cold. I don't know if y'all could see this, but you put that in there and your wheel will lock into place. A little switch back here. Even if you don't unplug it, it won't let it come on. As soon as you take that cover off, it kills all the power. And you take all these screws out. Now, once you have all six screws out, I do use the one that come with because there are little magnets in the handle. These come in pretty handy when getting these out. You flip it over, set it on there, and then you can pull that right out. These, we want to clean off. Just give them a little dust in there. And set them off to the side and then we'll take that same t-handle with the magnets and we'll grab the blade now you can see this blades definitely got some crap on it it's a uh, it is pretty dull and another thing you can see is the amount of buildup underneath it here don't do this with a sharp blade. You'll cut your finger for sure. But there is a ton of buildup. So before you put the new blades back on, you want to make sure to clean where the blade sits. Now, the new blades come packaged like so. These are very sharp. So we'll take this end off, and take this end off, and then you can see we have three blades. They have alignment holes in them. Got three alignment holes, and there are two pins on that bed in which the two outside holes rest. And your middle is on your plate. Your retention plate so be very careful when handling these because these will peel you open in a minute you're going to want to use that same t-handle let it slide on there and then we're going to set it right back on to those pins now what you do is you can see that little pin in the middle that will align with your center pin so you flip it over lower it in nice and easy until you kind of feel it set into place and then you put your six screws back in I like to start them all by hand. By starting them by hand, you eliminate the chances of cross threading them. Cross threading and these are bad. You don't want to do that. Now, I don't know if y'all are mechanics or not, or technicians, but I like to work from the outside in. You don't have to kill them. It doesn't take much you just snug them in real tight because what like I said once it heats up they'll expand kind of like an oil filter you want a little tighter than an oil filter but 
you definitely don't want to over tighten them if you look in the manual there might actually be a torque setting but I don't have the manual anymore nor do I have a torque wrench anymore And once you got them six done, you push your little button with it unplugged and you rotate to the next set of blades. You feel it click in and you're all ready to change the next set. Once you got all your blades put back in, it's a good practice to go ahead and check this fan blade. I burn up one because I let my barrel get full, but you can get all these parts at ereplacementparts.com. I'll leave a link down this description below so y'all can go check it out they have all the parts for this planer now you got everything back together time to put your cover back on so slide it in there get it on that little switch And put your bolts back in. Again, I like to start them by hand. It just helps prevent cross threading. I just wanted to uh, note that uh, you should change out your blade bolts every so many changes I had one that happened off camera that was stripped out and the Allen wrench did not want to grab it so now I have to go to the hardware store and get a new bolt now I got lucky I drilled this out and hit it with some easy outs and it come right out. You may not be so lucky. So now we got everything all cleaned up and sharp. We put it back over here on the planer station. This planer station allows me 70 inches worth of cut. And it works really well. It's right here by a plug. Everything folds down. Dust collection hose goes on. And let's see if it works. Beautiful. So now we got the planer back in place and talk about this red hose. This is my dust collection hose. That dust collection hose, I got a short little piece here to show you. That dust collection hose goes in to this barrel because I don't have a dust collector. I think we've established that in another video. But uh, that runs down behind my bench into this barrel. Now I tried it with a lid and it just blew the hose out. So what I found is I went out and got a single bed sheet and I cover the barrel with the bed sheet. And I put the ring back on it and that holds the bed sheet in place. Allowing for air to escape but not dust. The dust stays in the barrel. Now I know this might not be the most technological dust collection but it is most certainly better than having that blow all that crap back here in this corner 
I promise you, it's way better. If you don't have a dust collection for your planer, you might want to try that out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I maintenance a rigid 4331 13-inch thickness planer. Now, if you've got any questions, you can leave them down in the comments. Uh, you can like and subscribe. That way you can uh, see me use this bad boy. Uh, Alright then. Y'all have a good day.